Welcome to Comfy Happy Number Two. So, I'm not gonna make a part two. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I did mention something. So, yeah, I did say something in the other video about I have um say some things about some of the black cats that are following Donald Trump. So I found this clip from The View from YouTube of our ex-president saying that he will not apologize about the Central Park 7. And I'm going to play that for y'all. And before y'all come at me about this Donald Trump, y'all know I don't support him. I could care two shits about him. I hope he's fine. I don't wish no ill will to this man. But I want y'all to understand something that as a person who is mixed with native as well as black, this is why I will not support him. And for the black people who do support him, this is why I question your moral compass. I don't really give a fuck that you support him, but this is why I question your moral compass. 1989, when he called for the death penalty of the five young men arrested in the Central Park jogging rape case. They were incarcerated between six and 14 years before DNA evidence exonerated them. And the courts awarded them $41 million for this miscarriage of justice. Does he think it's time to maybe offer up an apology? Take a look. You and people on both sides of that, they admitted their guilt. If you look at Linda Fairstein and if you look at some of the prosecutors, uh, they think that the city should never have settled that case. So we'll leave it at that. Y'all did her say DNA exonerated them. DNA evidence does not lie. It's one of the things that we know. DNA doesn't lie. So regardless of what you thought it was, once you find out that DNA has exonerated them, you don't think you owe them an apology for asking for the death penalty, had they, which had they gotten it, they would not have lived long enough for DNA to exonerate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel just, you know, there's a lot of things that lie in the world. DNA ain't one of them. The actual perp confessed. Yeah. Let's stop it right there. Yes. Because, you know, like me, they're a little biased to Trump. And I'm a lot biased to Trump for that one reason right there. Let's see if Google can find the other. Donald Trump says these Indians don't look like Indians to him. So... There's no video, but you got this video that you can go find your damn self. But 1993, Donald Trump comments about Indians preview as much for his 2016 campaign. Oh, there is video. Well, fuck with me. Yeah. And then y'all want to know why I don't support this man. Because we got to wait for this advertisement to go through. CO2 emissions with crops like these. That I hate technology. I just want y'all to know. I hate technology. Diesel, which could reduce emissions by about 3 million metric tons per year. I also don't know how to make that stop. If this continues as a threat, it's my opinion that it will blow. It will blow sky high. It will be the biggest scandal ever, or one of the biggest scandals since Al Capone in terms of organized crime. I believe that there's going to be a lot of embarrassed and a lot of red faces. But to sit here and listen, as people are saying that there's no organized crime, that there's no money laundering, that there's no anything, and that an Indian chief is going to tell Joey Killer to please get off his reservation is almost unbelievable to me. You have basically stated uh, that the problem seems to be that the FBI doesn't have any people or is that correct? Is the issue that uh, you... No, I think it's far beyond that. I, I think that people have got paper bags over their faces and nobody's looking. Everybody, it seems to me, from even just a common sense standpoint, knows what's going on. And they left off the big fact, because this is the internet. Did you... Okay, maybe I hit the wrong button and they weren't done yet. Man. This list Where's the picture? To the FBI at any time. Uh, I'm not a law enforcement officer. I'm not supposed to be going around checking Indian reservations. That what you, that's what you have the FBI for. They're very capable, the most capable. But that's not my job. The Indians don't have to pay tax. Nobody's more for the Indians than Donald Trump. And you ask about 
You ask about competing. I love to compete. Nobody likes, and I think many of you folks up there know for a fact that I love to compete. But I like to compete on an equal footing. I'm competing and paying hundreds of millions of dollars in tax. My so-called, as you would call them, opponent, and they're not an opponent, but my opponent is competing and paying no tax. It's not a fair situation. It's you indicate that they don't pay taxes. I didn't indicate they don't pay taxes. I said they're not paying taxes on casino. Oh, that's not because the on... profits from it are to go to the reservations. Oh, really? In spite of the SBI testimony that this is not a significant problem, Mr. Trump, once, in one sentence you say uh, uh, they are the most capable of agencies and that you're not a law enforcement expert, and then you tell us that you have superior knowledge to their knowledge about uh, the extent of uh, organized crime on Indian reservations. You've got a totally closed mind on no, the, no, on no, the subject, sir. Trump. We could walk in here with the greatest proof in the history of the world, and frankly, your mind is so closed for whatever reason that I can't believe it. But you don't but have if that. You really you wanna, don't have if that. you really want to study this, yes. when you tell me that there are no FBI agents assigned to the Indian reservations, and yet you have tremendous numbers in Las Vegas and in Atlantic City, tremendous numbers, in fact, two of their largest places, I want to tell you something. You have a long way to go. And for whatever reason, you have a closed mind. I don't know why. Perhaps you could tell me. No, Mr. Trump, I have a closed mind against evidence that is not substantiated. Oh, well. I have a closed mind against statements that are made about other people in general. You're going to be very embarrassed in two mind years, sir. You go on a radio show and you say, now some drunken Indians want to come down here and open a, a residence. I didn't say that, sir. Quote it. I didn't say that. Who said that? Who said that? I'd like an apology right now because I didn't say that. I must open the broadcast, so excuse me, Mr. I must said that. Okay, said could I that. please have an apology? You can have an apology. Thank you, sir. And then you went on to, the, is this you discussing Indian blood? We're going to judge people by whether they have Indian blood, whether they're qualified to run a gaming casino or not? Uh, I, that probably is me, absolutely, because I'll tell you what, if you look, if you look at some of the reservations that you've approved you sir and your great wisdom have approved i will tell you right now uh they don't look like indians to me and they don't look like the indians now maybe we say politically correct or not politically correct they don't look like indians to me and they don't look like indians to indians and a lot of people are laughing at it and you're telling how tough it is how rough it is to get approved when you go up to connecticut and you look now they don't look like indians to me sir Thank God that's not the test of whether or not people have rights in this country or not, whether or not they pass your look test. Depends whether, yeah, depends whether or not you're approving it, sir. No, no, it's not a question whether I'm approving it. It's not a question whether I'm approving it. Now, I'm going to finish that in a second. But that right there is what swayed me from him before the Central Park Five. Because this happened in 93, all right? She's getting out of high school. You see my face? I probably don't look like an Indian to him either. But I am part Native. Period. Natives come in different colors due to geographical location as well as bloodline. Alright? I'm also part black. And I'm also part white. As you can see, I am high yellow. But here's the thing. When I go around, people often ask me, what Native are you mixed with? Or are you Hawaiian? Or are you Mexican? But newsflash for everyone, Mexicans are Native Americans too. So, I guess I don't look Native. But we're going to let them finish that. They don't look Jewish to me. Oh, really? They don't look well. Indian to me. They don't look Italian to me. Mm -hmm. That was a test for whether people could go into business or not go into business, whether they could get a bank loan. You're too black. You're not black enough. I want to find out. You, well, then why are you you're approving for Indian? Why don't you approve it for everybody then, sir? If your case is non-discriminatory, why don't you approve for everybody? You're saying only Indians. Wait a minute, sir. You're saying only Indians can have the reservations. Only Indians can have the gaming. So why aren't you approving it for everybody? Why are you being discriminatory? Why is it that the Indians don't pay tax? but everybody else does, I do. Why is it that I pay tax? Why is it that senior citizens get tremendous benefit from the taxes that 
a certain industry does, but the Indians aren't contributing to that. Why aren't the Indians, excuse me, sir, why aren't the Indians that are making all the money in Connecticut, which is the most successful of the Indian reservations, why aren't they spreading the wealth with the other Indians, sir? Why don't you do something for the other Indians that are living in total poverty? Because you know why? Because their reservation Trump, is too you'll far give the away. chairman a chance to answer your questions, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will, absolutely. Now, for those who missed all that, you can go find that entire thing. It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But right then and there, started my dislike for the former president. Right then and there. Not the fact that he was being a dick, because I'm a dick. Alright? Hell, I'm an asshole and a dick. But once you start going, why not the Indians? Why not the Indians? Well, here's the thing. Not all the Indians that are federally recognized have casinos. Yeah, there are casinos up and down the eastern seaboard. There are casinos out west. And he specifically wanted the Native Americans to pay higher taxes because they were putting him out of business. So if you're Native and you voted for him, go back and watch that. If you're black and you voted for him, go back and watch that shit about the Central Park Five. Where he couldn't muster up the dignity to say, I'm sorry for five innocent people, which I believe only four of them actually survived to get their money. But I'm not mad at anybody who supports him. I question your moral compass. I'm part Native. I'm part black. So both of those affect my moral compass. Understand that shit. See, being part black back in 89, when you should hang them, it was said. It wasn't in that video, but there's one with them out there. Go find it. You should bring back the death penalty. If at all possible, we should hang them. Yeah, those were words. But black people jumped to this guy's side because... You know, pick me. You know, I didn't vote for him. I'll never vote for him. If you threaten my life, I still wouldn't vote for him. You just go ahead and kill me. Get it over with. Because first and foremost, you're going to work to kill me. Period. This Cherokee fire is hard to kill. Two. It went but two or three years later. 90, 91, 92, 93. 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. So about four or five years later. Over casinos. But he was doing well out west, but he wanted that shit at Connecticut. Because you know what? Connecticut is what? An hour or so flight out of New York if you have money? Probably not even that if you don't have money. Yeah, an hour to drive if you got money? Because Connecticut is where all the rich, rich, rich people live. You know, WWE's based in Connecticut. You know, the main, the main, the main building is based in Connecticut. When um, the um, I can't think of the names. When the McMahon's, whichever one was running for office, they were running for office in Connecticut. Okay, so you know that's why Miss McMahon, who was running, I don't know if she won, but she was not on TV anymore because there's so many different laws of political stuff that you have to go through for that. So again, if you were a Trump supporter. And you left my channel. I don't have the right to be mad. I really don't. So I'm not. And you're always welcome back. But that there is the reasons why I do not support this guy. He is a racist. Whether you like it or not, that's not my problem. That's a your problem. What is my problem is that I don't like him. I don't hate him. But I don't like him. And somewhere along the line, you have to understand where I feel. And I'm going to explain that in a New York Minute. Now let me get to explaining it. If you haven't been the victim of racism... If you don't know what racism is, I just gave you two examples. So let me give you examples of my personal racism. How in grade school, I was called a half-breed 
over a thousand times per year. Because see, racism is taught at home. It's not taught at school. So you can imagine how many black kids and white kids would call me a half-breed while I'm sitting at school. And again, if you haven't had that happen to you, then you have no idea. I didn't know I was part native to the fifth fucking grade. Because here's that thing about mixed children that people who aren't mixed don't know. See, when you get up in the morning and you're not mixed and both your parents are the same exact color, you know, light brown or tan or if you're white or if you're Asian, you don't know the shit that we know. But y'all do notice the shit that we don't notice, all right? Because mixed kids, we see our parents first or our grandparents. We don't see what race they are. You can tell me my grandmother was native all goddamn day long. To me, you were speaking Chinese. I would not have known what the fuck that even remotely meant. Because you'd be like, yeah, your, your grandma's native. Your grandma's native. Like, what the fuck is native? All done. And then you start learning about shit when you get to school. That's when things take a turn. Alright? Like I said, when I was with my great-grandmother Ada, and she told me stories about her and her brother John, and I guess she might be a resident school survivor, so I'm going to have to look into that. Next time I talk to my Aunt Ruth, I'll probably try to call her tomorrow. I did call her today. But I'm going to need to look into that. Because here's the thing. Um, if I can prove that she was a resident school survivor, then it's going to be a lot easier for me to deal with the BIA. Anyway, that being said, there's this. My grandma Ada would tell me stories. Native American folklore, coyote, stuff like that, because coyote belongs to everybody. Thunderbirds, questionable, deer woman's not Cherokee, um, Bigfoot, he's basically everybody. Ah, she didn't tell me anything about the wood trolls or the wood nips. I'm still trying to learn those folklorish things. But the thing is, I didn't know she was native. I just knew her as my great grandmother. Just like my grandmother, who is her daughter. I didn't know. No, I didn't know. I just thought, that's my grandmother. That's my great grandmother. That's it. And on my mom's side, same concept. I didn't fucking know. Didn't fucking know. My grandfather was half black and half white on my mom's side. My grandfather on my father's side was black. My grandmother was native. Her mother was native. My grandmother on my mom's side is native and black or native. We don't fucking know because she was adopted and raised by a black woman. So all our lives, we just thought we were black. And then kids started calling me half-breed and started pointing out how I look different. How I have curly hair and they don't. That's why I put so much damn royal crown in this shit so it can stay slick and straight. And I wash my hair two nights a week. And I grease it after I wash it. That's why I still have a little shine on the forehead. But the thing is, you know, right up until school, never addressed my grandmother's heritage. Never thought about it. it wasn't a big thing, you know. And as I got older... And then found out some shit. You know, things got a little bit different. And then when it came to applying for jobs and I put black on the application and people were like, you don't look black. Are you sure you're black? And I'm like, yo, write the work state. If I allow my application, you fire me. My birth certificate says Negro. I don't put black on that application. Even though I haven't committed a crime, you would have the right to fire me. So now, it gets worse because I'm out of the army, so any job that I apply for, even if I don't want them to know, I have to put vet, I have to put association with the Army National Guard on my application. Period. So, let me, let me break this down for you. Regardless of who the fuck is in the White House. Because, since the military has had the VA, we haven't had a lot of things for vets. The VA has to take us because we signed up to protect all of you. However, 
getting benefits as a vet, if you're not fucked up enough, if you're not an amputee, if you're not um, full-fledged fucked up, or you haven't been deployed a lot and shit like that, you rarely get benefits. I get $300 a month because they fucked my leg up. I never got deployed. I never got to complete my training. I couldn't shoot rip shit. My leg got fucked up somewhere between Bravo and Delta. And they dropped the ball and didn't know that my leg was fucked up. I complained, but I didn't want to be a sick call ranger. I was doing everything I can to avoid sick call. And it made me go to sick call. Ended everything. Went to golf. Tried to kill a drill sergeant. Sent me to Bravo. I found a home in Bravo. I just couldn't shoot. Then we get to the hospital when I get back to Virginia. And I keep complaining about my leg. I'm like, yo, they said that it was my knee. They said it was my knee. It was my knee. It was my knee. And they give me x-rays. It's like, well, you got bone spurs. So I'm still complaining. Then my stomach starts hurting. I'm like, yo, I think I had a bleeding ulcer. It's like, didn't you come in here for your knee? It's like, yeah. I'm only going with what Fort Benning told me. It's like, well, when you check your bleeding ulcer, we're going to make you drink this shit. And you're going to take a big shit. Don't do anything but wipe your ass and put it in that thing over there. Leave the shit in the toilet. I said, okay. So I did that. Then the doctor came in. And I was uh, 42. And the doctor said, we got bad news, worse news, and good news. I said, okay, well, fuck the good news. Just give me the bad news and the worst news and get the shit over with. And before you can say anything, I said, so... Am I dying, and how long do I have? That was like the first thing, because my dad was beside me. And he's like, okay, it's not that damn bad, but it is really fucking bad. That's like, okay, lay it on me. I don't have time for you to bullshit. And he's like, you should probably be sitting there. I was like, dude, just tell me what the fuck is wrong with me so we can fix the fucking problem. He said, okay, so here's what the problem is. You're going to need a new hip, or you're never going to walk again. Period. You are never going to walk right Ever the fuck again. It's like, what the fuck you mean I need a new hip? Fort Benning said it was my fucking knee. It's like, yes and no. Your knee is what they found. Because they didn't really look. It's been your hip. I'm like, oh. So, what next? It's like, so first you gotta go get your wisdom teeth taken out. It's like, like, it's like, yeah, you gotta go get your wisdom teeth taken out. It's like, well, my wisdom teeth are fine. Those motherfuckers gotta get out right now. Or we're not cutting you. It's like, what does my teeth have to do with my ass? It's like, so, here's what's going to happen. If we don't give you the surgery, you're never going to walk again. Ever. Because your shit's deteriorated to the point of no return. And you need an emergency hip replacement like yesterday. So what you're going to do is, when you leave here, you're going to go make some dental appointments and they're going to cut out your fucking teeth. Even though we know your teeth are perfect outside of the chip where you have this partial... This $1,000 partial. $1,000. That's why this motherfucker never leaves my fucking house. If I'm not going anywhere where this tooth is required, this bitch does not come out my mouth. Can't eat with it because it'll lose. I don't have money to get this shit surgically put in. See? If my acting career takes off, excuse me, when my acting career takes off, that'll be first thing so I can get this shit fixed. And I just recently, thank God for insurance through the VA, I had to get these done. Because they chipped on something. I never felt them, so I obviously swallowed them. So, <laughs> it is what it is, but I had to get them cut out. And I asked them why, and it's like, because you're going to die on the table. So what the fuck you mean I'm going to die on the table? It's like, infection will kill you. Even if we give you the perfect surgery, if you get an infection... You're dead. And me not knowing shit about medical shit, I'm like, okay, whatever. So, my dad's crying. And I'm like, Dad, it's not that bad. They already told me I wasn't going to die. I just won't be able to fucking walk. Then that part said, and I was like, damn, you know, I drive a stick shift. That means I won't be able to fucking drive. That's what really got me upset because like, I drive a fucking stick. You know? So then I got a little mad. And then I accepted it. And then I went home. The very next day, I went home, I came back to Charlottesville, and started making dental appointments, because my um, 
my um, doctor said, he's like, you have a choice. You can do it in December or you can do it in January. We have an opening in December. And I said, how close to Christmas is this opening? He's like, why? I said, because I don't want to piss a doctor off because he has to cut a hole in my ass and miss Christmas with his fucking family because my dumb ass fell in a hole in fucking Fort Ben and Georgia that they should have sealed up so that I could still be in the fucking army versus being here getting the surgery. He said, don't worry, the doctor that's going to work on you, he's Muslim. He doesn't even fucking celebrate Christmas. He's like, yeah, but he still has family. Who may celebrate Christmas? I don't want to take Christmas from him. How close can we get this appointment so that he doesn't miss Christmas? I say, we can get the appointment on either the 18th or closer up. And I say, well, if you got closer up, let's do that. We couldn't get it closer up. We got it like on the 18th. We still gave him time to get home in time for Christmas. So, and he was a good doctor. He hooked me up. He talked to me. He's like, hey, look, I heard what you said. Don't worry about it. I'm not really a big Christmas guy. And you'll, sir, you'll be home for Christmas. So, after he gave me the surgery, you know, everything went great until my dad died. So, I got the surgery in December. My dad died in March. So, you can tell my year just went to hell right there. And he died in my other car, which was a stick shift. I had not too long got the car that I drive now before having the surgery. But the car needed some stuff. And so, yeah. When Murphy's Law strikes, it, it strikes with the power of Thor. So, yeah, you have to be real careful at what you do. Now, I know this got completely off topic. But as I was saying, no matter who was in the White House, rather it was Trump, rather it was Obama, rather it was Bush, none of them have done shit for us vets. Mandatorily, I get 300 bucks a month now. I started off with 150 over the time that I've been out of the military because I spent more time out of the military than in the military. In fact, I've spent more time in a VA hospital than I've spent at Fort Benning, Georgia. And no president. Not Bush, not Obama, not Trump, not Biden, not yet anyway, has decided that when a vet gets discharged, honorably discharged, we should be bringing home at least $2,000 to live off of because can't get health insurance. I don't make enough money. I can't find a cheap health insurance. And then there's $300 a month. Just how far do you think that's going? Why do you think I'm still here? You know, because I can't, I, I don't have a real job. Well, got a little under the table money, but I mean, I'm not getting enough money from the army to get out. And then um, school situation, I have pay grants. I don't have to pay them back. But whatever I don't spend in school goes into my pocket, which is how I've been living for so long. So when I tell y'all I don't have any money, there's no bullshit behind it. Where do you think $300 a month is going to go? It's going to bills. In my stomach. Unexpected bills, $300. Well, there it is. I don't have it, but there it is. So in two weeks, I'll get paid from the Army. Because I think today is what? Today is the 23rd. So... Roughly two weeks, I'll get paid, and I'll be broke, because the bills have to be paid. No ifs, no ands, no buts. The bills have to be paid. So, it is what it is. No president, including Trump, has put more money in any vet's hands. None of them. None of them give a fuck. But, I can tell you right now, those videos that I showed you about Trump, is why I don't support him. I am not mad at anybody here on my channel who supports Trump. I'm not. You leave, you leave. You come back, you come back. But understand, I'm not Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter. And now you know why I don't support him. The racist shit that he has gotten away with. The racist shit that he said while he was in the presidency. Or do we need to go find that clip about why don't you ask China to the Chinese reporter who's also from fucking Virginia. That did it for me right there. And let's not forget, stop Asian hate. Um, I'll make a second video about that. But let's not forget that Asian hate increased by four fucking percent when he started calling COVID-19 the Chinese virus, Kung Flu, and there was a couple of other ones that he outwardly admitted on live that these things were getting around. 
And finally, finally, because you have a grandmother whose nickname is Pocahontas. But because she's mixed or because she's native, but because she was adopted and raised black, um, she doesn't know the true story of how Pocahontas was the first victim of sex trafficking. Okay, she doesn't know that shit. She's probably pretty amorated with the Disney version, which is probably the safest version for everybody because that doesn't make people feel bad. But, yeah, she's probably enamorated with the Disney version. But, let's not forget the Wind Talkers. When they were with him, and the first th chance that he got, he took a stab at Elizabeth Warren. He literally took a stab at Elizabeth Warren on live TV. You guys are very important. We had somebody who's been here as long as you are. We call her Pocahontas. One of the code talkers busted. He was about to start laughing. I'm not going to lie. Looking at him go, <clears throat> and get ready to start laughing. It fucked me up. And I wanted to bust out laughing because he bust out laughing. But then I fucking got mad. I got real fucking mad because since he's been in office, every jab that he's taken at Elizabeth Warren has been calling her Pocahontas. And yet, some natives still voted for this fucker. When he told the Chinese reporter, go ask China, there were Asian campaigns, Asians for Trump. Because those Asians didn't understand that they just haven't ran into the racist people who think all Asians look alike. Those natives didn't understand. They didn't hear about the lie before he was the presidency where he said, um, if I become the president, I'm going to make sure nothing happens to Stand and Rock. First day as president, the pipeline's coming through Stand and Rock. But y'all don't remember that, right? I'm sure you don't. So if you want to know why I don't support him, there you go. He has done quite a few racist things to both of my cultures. And if you want to add to my white culture where he said he likes stupid people, the stupid white people that will vote for him because their husbands say so. So yeah, I think he's done hit all of my cultures. All of them. And if you want to follow him, it's fine. I'm not God. I'm not asking you to stop what you believe in. I'm asking you to question what you believe in as I question what I believe in sometimes. Democrats ain't no goddamn better. But they are the lesser of two evil. I said it. Democrats ain't no goddamn better. But they are the lesser of two evil. And to be honest, I wasn't going to vote for Biden. I literally was going to vote for only one person. But I had three candidates. My top choice was Elizabeth Warren because it would have been a proverbial slap in the face for a woman who's 4% native to win the goddamn presidency from a guy who kept calling her Pocahontas. Would have been a nice slap in the face. My second choice without a doubt was Andrew Yang, first Chinese president after telling a Chinese reporter, why don't you go ask China? First Chinese president in the United States of America. That shit would have been fucking history making. Fucking awesome. And again, I guess nobody wanted that. But my third choice would not only been history making, would have been a motherfucking milestone. It would have stomped the hole in history. To have the first gay president, Pete Buddha, 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 Pete, he was my third choice. Biden wasn't even on my radar. I voted for Biden, but he wasn't on my radar. Because my first and true choice was Elizabeth Warren. Then, when, when Andrew Yang dropped out, I was like, okay, got to go with Warren, got to go with Warren. Because they were kind of running even. But I really was going to go for Elizabeth Warren, who was the last one to drop out and um, gave her stuff to Biden. And I wasn't going to vote for Sandy. I mean, Sandy. I wasn't going to vote for v Bernie Sanders. I like him, but I wasn't going to vote for him. And like I said, the three I told you just a second ago, Warren, Yang, and Booty Chich, but Andrew Yang, Elizabeth Warren, and Pete. I don't know why he has, has such a hard fucking name. I'm sorry, Pete, if you're watching. But those were my top three over Biden. And I like Biden. I'm sorry. He has a hard road to go for the next three years. But, you know, I like him. I, I wasn't, Kamala Harris wasn't even on my list. You know, 
I did not like her, but I just, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. And now when they said Indian, I thought they meant Native American, and then she would have been like my punch card. But when they said Indian and her parents are, her, I think it's her mother, was from India, I was like, okay, she's the ones with the dots, not the feathers, okay? So I liked her too, but she just wasn't on my radar as well as the three people that I named. And then Biden was the comeback kid. Biden pulled the rabbit out of his hat, so I voted for him because I couldn't vote for the other three. That was that. And again, you are welcome to question my moral compass. But I already showed you why. If you watched the first few seconds of this video, I'm going to talk about the Central Park 5 in 1989. And I showed that clip from The View. And he couldn't even apologize. And thousands of black people flocked to this dude's side, not giving a shit about the 14-year-olds and the 16-year-olds that he wanted hang. So yeah, it is what it is. I'm not mad if you left me because I'm not a Trump supporter. That door will always be open. Understand that shit. But I'm going to let you know real quick. I do not discuss politics in public. So if you meet me in public, we can talk anything. Kung Fu, culture of Native Americans, black culture, Asian culture, the three things that I'm familiar with. But the second you want to bring up politics, yo, we're done talking. Because I'm going to say something that's going to piss you off, and you're going to want to punch me in the face. Which means clearly you haven't been watching my videos, because punching me in the face is going to be a very bad idea for you. So... And as I say in all my other videos, I send out warnings, not invitations. So don't, don't get fucked up trying to fucking prove that I am shit. Because you will find out real quickly that I am the shit. And I am the shit that you don't want to fuck with. That being said, I am Echo Fangry Wolf. This is Kung Fu Happy number two. Be seeing you.